So thank you for being here. Um, I'll try to talk to you about um, the non-Intel platforms uh, support with Haiku. So for those who don't know Haiku, you can go downstairs at our booth and have a live demo, and you can even buy DVDs. Yes, those <laughs> still exist. We actually sold uh, like uh, 60 of them yesterday or more. So yeah, it's a free software operating system. It's inspired by the BOS. Uh, who ever used BOS in here? Yeah, cool. Um, so we use our own kernel, our own uh, GUI. Um, and uh, yeah, BOS already had uh, a tradition of moving platforms because uh, their first prototype of the B-Box used the Hobbit uh, CPU and it was discontinued before they actually shipped the machine, so they had to move to PowerPC. Uh, so they made the B-Box with two uh, PowerPC processors uh, and then they stopped making hardware, so they ported to uh, the Macintosh uh, of the time. Uh, but then with the G3, Steve came back to <coughs> Apple and said, oh no, you won't get the specs for the G3. Um, so then they ported it to uh, the PC. Uh, and then they failed because, well, basically Microsoft owns the PC. Uh, so if, in case you thought um, uh, Microsoft controlling who runs, uh, which OS is installed uh, with Secure Boot, uh, well, it started way before. Just look at this uh, article. Um, so yeah, uh, Jean-Luc Gasset, the founder of B, uh, was uh, quoted saying this, once I once reached peaceful coexistence with Windows, you may laugh at my expense, I deserve it. Uh, so what's happening with Haiku when you boot on a regular PC? Well, you have the BIOS usually, you have the MBR, either uh, our own MBR, which is called Bootman, or uh, Grub maybe, uh, and chain loading. Uh, and then the MBR uh, loads the first sector of the uh, partition, um, so we call it stage one. Um, and then this one should locate Haiku Loader, uh, so it needs the partition offset from the start of the disk. Uh, we have a, a tool to um, uh, edit this, uh, the first sector to uh, write it. It's, it actually shouldn't be required now with uh, the latest biases, so uh, maybe uh, we should fix this. Uh, and then Haiku Loader actually loads the kernel and passes control. So it's not unlike NetBSD or FreeBSD, if you know it. Uh, it just has a visual menu with the, uh, the boot options. So Haiku Loader, um, which is now it, its own package, because Haiku now uses packages. Um, but this one is a bit special because uh, the first sector doesn't know how to uh, decompress, so it's not compressed. Uh, Haiku Loader sets the graphic mode because we want to be nice to the user and show a nice splash screen. It is the kernel, the modules from BFS, which is our own file system. Um, and eventually you can load from a floppy, so uh, we can fake an init RD uh, thingy. Uh, it sets up the MMU, the FPU, and some other things, so it's, just not, uh, it's not just a chain loader. Uh, and it calls the BIOS for many things, like loading sectors. And then it calls the kernel with some uh, structures, <coughs> which include uh, actually platform-specific stuff and architecture-specific stuff. Uh, and we currently have a problem with this because on, s on most architectures, we are actually uh, support many platforms now. So on PPC, for example, we have uh, Open Firmware and U-Boot. Uh, so which one is it? So we ha actually have to fake the uh, Open Firmware uh, stuff in the U-Boot uh, strike, and it's it's quite ugly for now. So there are some challenges when you want to port Haiku to uh, um, another um, architecture. Uh, first, since the latest beta, which is our first beta, uh, we do support packaging, which mean, uh, which is nice because the we can almost be a, have reproducible builds uh, because we use a shroud to build stuff. Uh, but it also means the dependencies are stricter, so you can just uh, screw things out just to bootstrap stuff. Um, and Haiku needs basically Haiku to build itself, uh, which is quite easy on x86, <coughs> but not really on, on PPC or ARM. <coughs> 
And so, yeah, bootstrap builds are not usually um, um, are not usually um, uh, run run by many people, so it's easy to break. And we also use C++, which is um, which can be a, a bit of a pain uh, sometimes. So PowerPC. Uh, that one was started long ago. It's the first non-x86 x86 <coughs> port. <coughs> started with the Pegasus one, and some years passed. And I started uh, porting to uh, the the SAM board and other Amiga uh, OS compatible computers, uh, which run U-Boot. QMU uh, f uh, knows how to emulate Macintosh, but there is always some issues. Uh, and then there's the B-Box. Uh, open firmware. Well. It's nicer than, than the BIOS, actually. It's uh, cleaner, uh, except for um, interactive things, well, like shutting down the computer. How do, do you do it without ACPI? Well, you have to call open firmware, which means you have to keep the older mappings, so actually open firmware still runs. Uh, maybe we should use an emulator. We do this, this for the Visa BIOS on x86. Also, uh, there are standardized binding, except for the frame buffer, for example. You can actually draw to the screen, but you can't know where it is in memory. So it's not that uh, useful. Well, this one is uh, quite weird. I ended up writing stuff for nothing, but yeah. <coughs> uh, the SAM board, it's an embedded board. It's also used for uh, Amiga OS fans. And well, it's a book E CPU. So for those who don't know, it's not like the G3, G4 uh, line of CPUs. It's very different. Basically, uh, it's a very limited MMU. You just have the the TLBs, so you have to actually uh, um, fill the TLBs manually. Uh, it's quite painful. Even uh, the Linux guys actually uh, tried like three times to get it right. Um, so yeah, and their uh, fork of Uboot is, is very old, and they basically rewrote uh, most of the graphics stuff, uh, and they also have things we can't even use, so well. Uh, but I did uh, write a target for QMU, uh, which a uh, nice guy, uh, nice guy uh, uh, cleaned up my patches and upstreamed them. Uh, so yeah, well, uh, it kind of worked at some point. PPC Macintosh, as I said, there are some always some issues like, oh wait, we didn't, we forgot to uh, declare the uh, PCI bus uh, uh, virtual uh, translations in the open firmware tree, so and uh, we put our, our kernel there. Uh, oops, the B box, yeah. So it's not the TARDIS, it's but it's still a blue box. I started the port recently. I mainly just wrote the uh, device tree because it's so old, nobody uh, even cared. Um, the boot ROM is quite dumb. It just loads a, a PEF file. So, uh, but uh, yeah, LD claims to know uh, how to write a PEF file, but it doesn't. So I have to fix this. So that's my personal to do for uh, PPC. Uh, ARM. Well, it started long ago, uh, and we thought, oh, cool, there's an API in U-Boot. We can call it, and then. We spent a week trying to find it, uh, and oh yeah, I actually we wrote it for NetBSD or FreeBSD, but well, nobody cares about them, so nobody compiles it in. Okay, well, uh, then we managed to load the kernel, and then some people wrote stuff for x86 that broke the the build, so we fixed it. Then it breaks, so well, okay. Uh, so yeah, basically you boot. There's no usable API. Uh, there's some nice stuff. At least you thought it was nice. Uh, if you are lucky and you have a recent enough you boot, at least you boot fixes the FDT with the memory size. Um, yeah, you boot doesn't know about BFS, of course. Uh, and where's the frame buffer? Well, nobody cares on embedded. So yeah. <coughs> so let's look at the global data. Uh, okay, so it's a nice structure with. Architecture, architecture dependent stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. At least we get the the frame buffer base, but what's the geometry of it? We don't know. Um, yeah, NK image. There's a nice option. Let's add Haiku. Yeah, but the actual board, the existing boards, they use the previous Shuboot, so it won't work. Let's fake NetBSD. Oh, this board doesn't support NetBSD. Okay, let's boot. Ah, oh, yeah, but there are some issues with that. Okay, let's fake Linux. But which one? Because the old stuff is 
I tag the stuff, and then the tools to actually fill this in so the rest of the code is cleaner because it's currently a mess. Yeah, this one is really just for fun. Uh, M68K is nice. You saw the uh, X86K uh, uh, also uh, earlier uh, in the previous talk. Um, if anyone has the next box to donate, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there are still people uh, making hardware with which are compatible with uh, those things. Uh, basically, uh, the Fire B, yeah, it's a cold fire stuff, and uh, Vampire, uh, it's a FPGA uh, emulation. Uh, they both have MMUs, but a bit different, like the, um, the book eCPU, so it's just a TLB and you well, fill it manually. Uh, yeah, I don't think I have a time for a demo, so, uh, well, yeah, so uh, just come uh, and see me. Uh, so it looks like this uh, on Atari and Amiga. Uh, well, nobody uh, really looks into it. I don't really, I didn't really try UFI uh, yet. Uh, it should work, uh, but it's not yet officially supported, so it won't update the loader in the uh, FAT partition. And yeah, Race 5, uh, we just started, so if you have a demo board to send, please send it. And, of course, if you want to help, there you go. So I think we have maybe one minute for a question. Yep, two minutes. Oh, wow. Yeah, you were back talking about U-Boot, and um, the U-Boot you have uh, enough of UE, uh, UA fees that you should be able to start your operating system. So is the BIOS not correctly supporting UEFI on ARM, or what is missing? Well, uh, so um, U-Boot supports EFI now, well, which is now, because back then it didn't uh, support it. And, and uh, so, yeah, uh, why not use EFI uh, with U-Boot? Well, because back then it didn't support EFI, and uh, now we just have uh, ARM supports for the, for the EFI uh, code. So, uh, yeah, for the newer boards, we will use it, yes. So you get a DVD. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> OK. Uh, do we have more time or? OK. Uh, see, it's uh, really quite a lot of work to get anything working on any platform. Uh, which platforms do work now? Uh, well, basically x86 and 64-bit uh, 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 PC, because it's quite well maintained. Uh, that's about it. And uh, we are currently working to fix the ARM port, uh, because there is bootstrapping issues. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, help, welcome. Thanks. And you get a DVD. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's one last